Well, hello, friends. It is so good again to see you this week. Thank you so much for joining me, Pastor Zach, for this week's children's sermon. I hope you had a great first day of school. I am so proud of you. I hope you've started off this year strong, learning, making new friends, and having fun. I certainly hope you all have been in my prayers, and I look forward to hearing all the good stories at at um, Sunday school this upcoming Sunday. It's our first one after taking the summer off for a little bit. So I look forward to seeing you guys at 9.30 um, this Sunday. And I, uh, it's going to be a great time uh, to be together, to be in, the, to read the Bible, to have crafts, to of course have snack, and to just have some time together, which is always so important. Which gets me to a question, like always, but before we do that, let's find that comfortable spot, inside or out, and let's take that deep breath in and deep breath out together, okay? Ready? One, two, three, in. Hold it, and out. A reminder that the breath of life comes from God for us to love our neighbors and to love God a little bit more each and every day. So as I said, I have that question for you. Do you know two people? <clears throat> How about this? Do you know three people? I think the answer to that is yes, because I know you all make friends and that here at church, you already know more than two people or three people. Why do I ask you this, you might say? Well, Jesus is telling us a story in Matthew, and not really a story, but more teaching us of what to do maybe when bickering or when sometimes disagreements might happen. And Jesus says that we are to come together with the person who we might have a disagreement with. And then Jesus goes on to say how we ought to forgive others, that maybe we've been wronged and that we need to say, I'm sorry, or sometimes we need to accept the I'm sorry, the, the apology. But then after all that, after Jesus talks about reconciliation and about coming together, Jesus says some of these words that I'm sure you might be familiar with. This comes from Matthew 18. He says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. I think this is one of the most amazing promises that Jesus makes. That Jesus says that wherever two or three people are gathered in Jesus' name, he promises to show up and be present. Now, I think that's amazing because Jesus is already present with us individually. And then when there's that other person, even maybe the person we disagree with, Jesus is there. Jesus is there bringing us together to discern and to feel God's love, to share God's love, and for us to figure out what God's love might look like in a particular time, at a particular place. We don't know sometimes, but Jesus promises to be present and promises to be with us at all times which is a reminder that when we're at Sunday school, Jesus is with us. When we are at home, Jesus is with us. When we are at church, Jesus is here. Maybe when we're at McDonald's having a Bible study, or maybe when we're at school and we might be talking about God, Jesus is there. I know our men's Bible study sometimes meets up at JoJo's, which is the diner in Elkton, to have breakfast. When we're gathered, we're gathered in his name. And guess what? Because of that, he's there. Jesus is with us. No matter what. Jesus doesn't put any condition. Doesn't say, I'm with you only if you do this. I'm with you only if you do that. And Jesus doesn't say, if you gather, but he says, where? Where two or three are gathered? Because of that's worship, I'm there. When two or three are gathered, I'm there. 
Jesus knows that we will gather in his name. And Jesus knows that we need his presence to be the best selves, to be the best disciples, to be the best children of God we can be. We need God's love and grace and forgiveness. And when Jesus promises to show up and to be with us, that grace extends into our hearts and can transform our life, our life, or the lives and the lives of those around us. God is doing something new and amazing and exciting. And when Jesus is in the midst of that, oh man, guys, it is so awesome. I see that when we had the first day of school treats, when we met the kids off the bus and their smiles, their thank yous, Jesus was there. When we feed folks, when we collect clothes, when we do the work of the church, Jesus is present and it's so good. We can feel it. We can say, you know what? I could feel Jesus's love in that moment. We can feel it because Jesus promises to be there. So he shows up. Jesus keeps his promises. So it's a good reminder that whether or not we agree or disagree with the person next to us, that when we're maybe even at church meetings or at Sunday school or at Nicanor when we have our feeding ministry, whenever we do anything for the church, Jesus is with us. So we can pray to him. We can ask him to reveal himself in many amazing ways so that we might know and feel the love of God a little bit more. Friends, I am confident that between here on the screen and you at home, two or three or more of us are gathered. Jesus is here in our midst, reminding us always that you are loved and you are enough. Let us pray. Hey, Jesus. Thank you for being with us always and promising to show up. Boy, when you show up, it's amazing, and we are so thankful. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Friends, again, I hope to see you on Sunday for Sunday School as we kick off this new year at 930. I look forward to hearing about your first day of school adventures. And as always, you are loved, you are enough, and nothing can separate you from God's love in Jesus. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.